Can someone please explain to me what is going on with this weather? I came to this country in no small part because I was promised beautiful white fluffy snow all throughout winter. And instead, I'm dealing with this shit. Is that better? I feel like it's worse. So first of all, what is it? Well, the website describes it as a futuristic titanium ruler that measures irregular shapes. You can play it as a pendant and meditation toy on your fingertips. Essentially, it's, it's a ruler. The whole purpose of this is it's to measure things and supposedly measure them relatively accurately in a package that is much, much smaller than a typical ruler or a typical tape measure. That's the idea anyway. So just taking a quick look at the build quality here, it does appear to be CNC titanium, which is what they claim it to be. You'll see that there's a rotating ring that goes around the outside and that clicking that's supposed to give you the haptic feedback so you know that it's done a full revolution and at the same time it allows it to lock into place essentially so it stays at zero and they claim to have like a sort of high friction surface some kind of laser etching on the outside to give it that texture which seems to work pretty well actually it definitely feels pretty good in terms of the movement, it's definitely a bearing. Quite a lot of axial play there, probably just from using like cheap bearings, to be honest with you. In terms of the lettering, it appears to be laser etched. And then you do have the nice titanium marking on the top, which is CNC'd. So overall, pretty nice looking, pretty decent build quality. Uh, the bearing, I'm not a huge fan of, uh, but for the most part, seems seems to be pretty solid. So what you just saw was what I would call a medium, medium length test going at what is supposed to be 800 millimeters, 0.8 meters or 80 centimeters. The Titana Tyrola is coming in at about 802 and a half or 803 millimeters uh, for every 800, which is a fuck, roughly 0.3% fluctuation, I think, which doesn't sound like a lot, maybe isn't. Uh, for some uses, depending on your needs. For me, that's pretty extreme, actually. Three millimeters at 800. Um, if you're in the building world and you're trying to cut something, a piece of timber or whatever it is, and it's three millimeters over, that's, to me, that's an unacceptable margin of, of error, to be honest. So the results of the long range test are in. Interestingly, it came out slightly differently to the first set of results. The actual distance of the room that I measured, I measured between two points, so two known points, um, was 7.335 meters or seven meters and 335 millimeters with the tape measure. But interestingly, the Tarola this time actually came in at less than that, unlike the first test, came in at 7.295 and I have a theory about why this is, and I think it's due to the surface, the material that was actually being measured on. The ground is relatively slippery. It's a lot less friction than, than the mat that I used the first time here. And specifically with the design of this, because there's so much friction, when it hits that zero mark where it kind of locks in, there's almost guaranteed to be some slip on, on a slippery surface with that. So if you can imagine there's 73 revolutions there, 
if every time it's slipping very slightly, that's where you're gonna lose your distance very quickly. And another thing I did notice while I was kind of just like playing with this is that there, due to the locking mechanism that this has, there is a sort of range between about 93 and about five on here. So it goes from zero all the way to 100. So sort of seven millimeters backwards and about five millimeters forwards, you have this essentially the sponginess that comes from the locking mechanism itself. And as you get close to zero, it either just springs into place and locks at zero, or you kind of get this like spongy resistance if you're going from, from the 90 side, um, where it's it's not gonna accurately measure. Because if, if you're trying to measure 95, for example, it's gonna just spring back into sort of 93. So anything from that range is basically redundant, which again, I see to be a major design flaw. They really should have paid attention to that when they picked this kind of haptic feedback system. There's a much better way, in my opinion, to create haptic feedback than by having uh, what is a pretty primitive kind of locking mechanism. Okay, so who is this thing for? To whom would I recommend this product? And this, this is where I think the, personally, I think the marketing for this product is is a little bit off unless you're in very specific niches perhaps in the textile industry if you're making prototype garment or if you're doing upholstery and perhaps you need skirting pieces and you're you're making kind of one-offs again you don't have a template i could see this potentially being useful because you're able to measure those regular shapes uh, probably faster than if you use like a traditional method of, of measurement you know maybe if you're in the military i i don't know Maybe it's useful for mapping courses if you have a, a scale in your head and you're able to very, very quickly identify the distance and therefore calculate, you know, how long it's going to take you to walk there. That could be useful, maybe. I don't know. It's not the fact that it's better than something else. It's the fact that it's smaller, which means you can carry it more easily. And this, given the size, is something that I would say you could have in your pocket at all time. And that, to me, is the differentiator. That is the selling point for an everyday carry enthusiast. It is the fact that this is not better than another tape measure, but the tape measure you have is better than the one that you don't have. The other thing to mention is it does come in two sizes. This is the metric one. I know a lot of people that watch this are from the States. You're, my main audience is from the States and I appreciate you. And I'm sorry that I didn't think to use uh, an Imperial one uh, for your benefit. So if I've been talking gibberish using metric measurements all this time, I do apologize. One limitation to be aware of, one thing I notice, is that it doesn't really do internal corners because obviously the, the dimensions, the way that it, it would run up to that corner, it just stops. The fix to that is to measure the diameter of this and then just add that to your measurement. Uh, and if you're obviously, you're doing from corner to corner, you have to add it twice. So it's pain in the ass slightly, but it's not the end of the world. It's definitely doable. Sorry, radius, add the radius, not the diameter, because obviously you're gonna stop halfway. I guess one drawback actually that I didn't really mention is it's not cheap. Uh, I'm not fully in tune with how much titanium gear usually costs. I know it's never particularly cheap, so uh, for some people, maybe it's a reasonable price. For me, it seems a little high uh, for what it is. I think it's, it's retails at close to $100. I can't really tell you, to be honest. I don't want to speak to the reasonability of that cost. So just to summarize today's findings based on my initial testing and use of this product, I think what it doesn't do so well, and I know it's a big part of the marketing, but in my opinion, not so great at precise, accurate measurement, particularly on slippery surfaces and particularly over long distances. If I could provide a note to the manufacturer here, it's just, fix that haptic feedback mechanism. Now, good parts though, it's beautifully designed. It is a classy looking product, very good quality materials, it's titanium. Like you really can't go far wrong with it other than the couple of things I mentioned. It is overall a very nice product just to hold, to have, to look at, to fiddle with, you know, whatever. And finally, the most important part is just how small it is. It's so much more compact than a typical tape measure and yet it's still able to get you like 95% of the results of a normal tape measure for such a small package. And I think overall it is, it is a fantastic piece of work.
one thing before I go. I know it's been a while now, actually, and I apologize for keeping you waiting. But if you remember before Christmas, I did do a little kind of enter to win the products that I made in that last video. We've got the Sovereign Wallet, the Companion, the Everyday Carry Pouch. This is a little pocket pouch. And finally, the Winston the Pouch. Who won their respective gear? I need to work out how to do this. Um, this comment picker thing. Okay, we have a winner and <laughs> it happens to be someone I've actually spoken to before, Steve, Stephen Britton. I, we actually chatted on Instagram quite a while back. So Stephen, I, I really appreciate you reaching out. I appreciate the comment. I appreciate your continuous support. I, honestly, I can't actually think of a better person uh, to win that just from, from seeing how you've supported this channel the whole way through. So. I super appreciate it. You are the proud new owner of the Sovereign Wallet. I'm gonna have to figure out how to send this back to the UK, um, but uh, I'll leave that with me. In fact, should we, do we do another one? I feel like I wanna do another one. Peter Trap 1024, the Pocket EDC organizer is awesome. Thank you, Peter, I appreciate it. Stephen and Peter, please do reach out to me to get your gifts, send me a DM on Instagram. Uh, once I get your address, I'll, I'll send them out to you as quickly as I possibly can. Okay, so everyone, thank you again. Catch you soon. Take care. Love you. Bye. That was weird. <laughs>